Entering Bethlehem still at the age of 19, a young kid from the inner city. I didn't really know, I had never been to a steel mill before, but I was told that it was a permanent position and, and an opportunity to make a, a really good income and a life, and a good life for your family. I, I seized upon that. When Sparrow's Point closed down, it was, it was a grieving process for me because it had meant so much in my um, development into adult life. The initial period was um, some, some false optimism. For six months after the plant shut down, there was hope that a new buyer would step in and uh, rescue everyone. And it was even promoted to keep optimism going by the, at that time, president of the union. Joe Roselle. He says, we're um, working on some things and we got some people in the wings and this is a, this is a good facility and we still have a chance. You know, and for six months I held on. And um, eventually, you know, all hope was lost. It was an eye opener to see that some people who you spent so much time with on a daily basis sometimes more hours at work than you do at home abruptly leave your life. You know, if you had, in my case, if I got five people that I correspond with from all the people I met and known over those years, that's probably a high number. For so many people that we really did have a bond that was also lost in the process. It's loss of income and loss of relationships. And it's also loss of routine because something that you were so used to doing routinely, you have to find a new routine. My uh, new hobby is, is just exploring my, myself. The thing, finding, find, I had more time to, know, to learn about me because I was, um, I was kind of a robot. I'd wake up, go to work, come home, deal with responsibilities. Uh, the, the time, the time, the, the amount of time that I had without, see, cause uh, my situation was, I was a worker. Spurs Point afforded us the opportunity for loads of overtime. And there was multiple years when I averaged over 60 hours a week for the whole year. Which which made made for good income, you know, hundred thousand dollar income continuously for like six or seven years. But you worked a lot of overtime to get that. And what happens is you 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 sacrifice a lot for money in the in the uh, in the search for making a lot of money, thinking that it's going to improve your lifestyle, but you lose part of yourself. So. Hobby-wise, I've been um, self-improvement, you know, learning more about me, which is something that I took for granted. My health suffered over the years. I'm trying to improve that. Things that I really like to do, I'm really going, I'm kind of going back to me. Before my opportunities for training expired, I, I decided to uh, enter a new career field which is um, computer technology, currently a student at uh, ITT Tech. I really don't know how employers are going to feel. On one hand, they may say, well, he may have 10 or 15 years left of, you know, good I can get from him. Or they might say, well, he's very dependable. He's, um, he's got the right attitude. He knows why he's here. You know, so I really don't know what to expect, but going into training, and I'm in a, a two-year associate degree training program. I'm hoping that, uh, you know, somebody's going to see a value in me as an employee. One of the things I learned is that you hear a lot of people say, if I knew I was going to live this long, I would have done things a little differently. You have to believe in yourself and you have to invest in yourself. You know, it, Even whatever money you make, you want to save some of it for the future. You can't spend all your money. So the idea is if you can 
attach yourself to something that you're passionate about and build it from an early beginning without having to constantly try to reinvent yourself, it's the best way to go. If you can really decide what motivates you and what excites you and what, what could get you up in the morning and make you want to show up with enthusiasm, go for that and, and do, do what's necessary to hold on to it. Because it would be unfortunate if you invest 10 years and then have to reinvent and then 15 years and reinvent. No, you don't want to reinvent. You want to try to um, establish yourself because if you can, you can do very well in 20 years of a, uh, of a good career. I believe I'm going to, uh, I believe in myself. And that's what I think that's, that's important, to believe in yourself. So I'm that underdog now. I'm still that survivor. Like I said, I'm optimistic about my future.